Hi friends, Mickey here on this rainy Tuesday, and you're actually gonna be watching this video on a Monday, so happy time traveling. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about belting. This has been my number one requested video, and I've kind of steered away from this one up until now for two reasons. Number one is that singing is just weird, man. Your instrument is inside of your body, and everybody's experience of singing and interacting with that instrument is going to be different. Everybody that has the same make and model of piano is going to be interacting with the same instrument. I mean, obviously, your, your body is still interacting with an instrument, so there is some difference, but with singing, it's just this totally different experience from person to person because your entire instrument is contained within your body and we each have our own physical limitations and experience and qualia and whatever. And what works for one person is not necessarily going to work for another person. The second reason that I've steered away from this is that belting has become this holy grail for singing. And if you turn on any singing competition show, like The Voice or America's Got Talent, we all wanna see singers belting those high notes and that's just become the mark of what makes a good singer. And frankly, I don't think that's everything about being an artist. I think it's impressive, obviously, when you can belt high notes, but there are so many other aspects to singing that I think are really important as well. And if you go on YouTube, everybody wants to learn how to belt. So there's a bajillion different methods and tips and tricks and everyone and their mom has something to say about it. And a lot of it is misinformation. And the stuff that's not misinformation is going to work for some people and not work for others because of point number one. So <laughs> that being said, please take everything that I say in this video with a grain of salt, but I'm going to tell you what has worked for me and what has really changed my experience. For the first 20 years of my life as a singer, I was self-taught, I didn't have any training. I had a really big problem with belting. I always had a very naturally connected, powerful chest voice, but I would push my chest voice as high as it could go, and then I would break and flip into a very weak head voice. And I just always assumed that that was my natural instrument and my natural limitations, and I was never gonna be able to belt high up. Now that I have seen vocal therapists and vocal coaches, and I've spent a long time studying and teaching, I now know how to belt and I can get very loud in my high register. So I'm gonna share with you some of the things that really helped me to have that breakthrough. So this video is going to be broken up into three main basic points. Number one is all about resonance or where you place the vibration of your voice. Number two is gonna be all about muscular engagement and breath support. And number three is going to be about your rate of exhalation. And I'm gonna throw in some other tips at the end about posture and visualization, but those are really the three main buckets that we're gonna talk about today. And I'm also gonna to try to dispel some misinformation and some common misconceptions about how to belt. So first, let's take a moment to define what is belting. Belting is using a loud, connected, projected sound. And as singers, we want to be able to belt throughout our entire range. So not only in your chest voice, but in your break or your passaggio, and into your head voice and back down again. And we want to be able to maintain the same loud, intense volume throughout our entire range. For a lot of people, Belting in your chest voice is very easy and natural because we speak in our chest voice. All you need to do is pretend that you are, for example, at a crowded party and your friend is standing across the room and you want to get their attention and tell them that you're ready to leave. So if you want to get somebody's attention, you go like this. Hey, Lita! Lita! Can you come here for a second? Ta-da! I did it! I got her attention. <laughs> so that is belting in your chest voice. Another easy way to experience what it feels like to belt in your chest voice is to pretend that you're mad at somebody. So a lot of times I'll tell my students to pretend that they're yelling at their younger sibling and say, no, you cannot borrow my Beats headphones without asking me. Those are mine. So that kind of 
scolding voice is a connected chest voice. And you use the same feeling in your body to sing with a chest voice. Ah! Good <clears throat> consonants or sounds to belt on in your chest voice include hey. So hey, 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 hey is a good belting warm up. Or no is another one. No! Or man, man! As you move up in your chest voice, you're gonna start to reach the limits of how high you can push that chest voice technique. And you're going to eventually get to your break or your bridge or your passaggio. And that's that couple of notes where you begin to transition from your chest voice to your head voice. The technique that you wanna use here is your mix voice. So you wanna start mixing your chest voice technique with your head voice technique. And rather than singing at 100%, you know, flooring it, 100% gas, which you really should never do because you get a very harsh, ugly sound, you wanna start pulling back the intensity and doing like 80% gas and mixing in some of that head voice. That way, when you flip into your head voice, which is going to be naturally weaker and softer, the contrast is going to be less noticeable. And then, as we get past our passaggio, we transition into our head voice. For many people, we naturally default to a much softer tone, like la la la. Suddenly, we're all Disney princesses serenading bluebirds. But in order to get a more powerful head voice that's going to match our chest voice better, we have to do something colloquially referred to as a false belt. So how do we achieve this false belt? Well, the first tip that I have for you has to do with resonance, and that is where the vibrations of your voice are hitting within your face. Most of the change in the timbre of your voice is controlled by the space within your face. And there's three zones where your voice can hit. Number one is very bright and front placed. And that's gonna give you a more nasal sound. It's called twang sometimes. People say you should sing into your nose or your mask or your nasopharynx. And it gives you a very pop sound. The second place is the opposite. So that's gonna be very back placed. And it's almost like you're swallowing your voice. And that's gonna give you a much darker tone. It sounds more bluesy. Sometimes you can even sound a little bit operatic when you place your voice back there. And then the third place is in the middle, and that's gonna be a mix of the two, or I would refer to it as like a, a neutral sound. When you are false belting, you want to access the forward placement, so that nasal sound. So you wanna be using sounds like the baby cry. Wah, 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 wah or like a wicked witch. Nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. Or you wanna have like a, a Brooklyn or like a New York accent. All of those are ways that you can kind of get that feeling and that buzziness. And you really should feel your voice buzzing in your nose. You can also, if you're at a loss, pinch your nose. And that's gonna allow you to get that really nasal feeling and start to feel your voice. No, my. Now my nose is stuck together with boogers, lovely. <laughs> That's gonna start to just give you that feeling of singing into your nose. The problem with using this nasal sound is it sounds very ugly. Ah, I just said ugly with three syllables. I just added a syllable and it's one of my pet peeves. Ugly, it's gonna sound very ugly. And so in order to get the benefit of using that twang, but to make it more beautiful, you want to darken the sound. And the way that you do that is to add some space in your face. So you open your throat and your mouth a little bit and just add some darkness back in. It's like you're mixing colors. So instead of having, if, if your nasal sound is like bright red, you wanna mute it with a little bit of white and start mixing in a little bit of that darkness so that you get a tone that's not as brassy and cutting. So it's the difference between yeah and yeah. I'm still able to project and be loud, but now it's a much more pleasing sound. Another way to think about it is when you're using that forward placed nasal sound, it's a very small, compact sound. 
and it's almost like your nose is plugged up because you're sick or it's blocked off for some reason and the sound is in this very narrow little compartment whereas when you're using a more dark sound oh your throat feels much more open if that makes sense the second tip that i have for you is muscular engagement you want to be using your core muscles or basically your abs when you're belting and this is where my first main misconception comes in. I saw a lot of videos where instructors were saying to bear down as if you're pushing out a poop or a baby. And for me, this just seems like you're gonna hurt yourself. So it's way too much constriction. So when I think about pushing out a baby, it's like, ah! you don't wanna be doing that when you're singing. You wanna be, there has to be a balance between muscular engagement and relaxation because singing should feel easy. Obviously you're exerting some amount of force, but you don't want to be injuring yourself. So what I like to tell my students is it's like you're going down for a sit up. So if you sit on the edge of your chair and you lean back like 45 degrees, you're going to feel your ab muscles engage. So right now my entire plate of abs is awake but i'm not hurting myself i'm not uh, straining and that amount of engagement is what you should feel when you're singing the second tip that i can give you is as you breathe in you want to feel the air column between your abs and your mouth as if it was locked so ah uh, when you're belting you should feel almost like you're holding your breath So I'm very, very loud up there. I'm engaging my abs, but I'm not straining anything. My third tip for you has to do with your rate of exhalation. And this is where the second major misconception about belting comes into play. A lot of people, myself included, when they think about belting, assume that you need to blow a lot of air in order to get a loud sound. It kind of makes sense, right? The more air and the more force you're exhaling with, the louder the sound. But that is actually the opposite of the truth. So if you think about your vocal cords, you have two vocal cords, and when they're completely separated, you don't get any tone. You just have breathing, right? You hear the sound of the air going between your vocal cords. When you're belting, you want your vocal cords to be completely zipped up. So I have a very, very connected my vocal cords are completely adducted. They're completely zipped up. When you have a breathy tone, ah, your vocal cords are still adducting, but there's more air that's escaping between them. So when you're belting, you want to make it easy for yourself to zip up those vocal cords and bring them together. And if you're blowing a lot of air, ah, it's gonna be really difficult to bring those vocal cords together. It's almost like you're walking through a wind tunnel and you're fighting against that air pressure. So you actually want to be exhaling as if you're exhaling through a tiny little coffee stirrer rather than through a bubble straw. And that's why in the last point I said that you wanna feel the lock on that air column and you wanna almost feel as if you're holding your breath when you're belting. And that tiny little amount of air is going to give you an incredibly focused, powerful sound. So those are my three main tips for how to belt successfully. And just to recap, they are having a forward placement of your resonance, engaging your ab muscles the proper amount, and controlling your rate of exhalation. There's a couple of other little tips that I find helpful. Number one is taking a nice deep yawny breath before you sing a phrase when you're belting. And the thing that that does is it opens your throat and it pushes your larynx down a little bit. So when people improperly belt and they push their chest voice higher and higher and they start screaming, their throat starts closing and their larynx comes up. So taking a deep yawny breath before you belt is gonna give you a much more relaxed, natural sound. It's gonna push that larynx down and open your throat and combat that tendency that we have to scream. 
Another tip that I have for you is to use your posture. So some people find it helpful to tilt their head down a little bit and lean slightly forward when they belt. And that just opens everything up. So if you're looking straight forward or you're looking up, your throat is gonna tend to be a little bit more closed. My final tip has to do with visualization. So <laughs> this has to do with not psyching yourself out before you go to belt a high note. And when people know that a high note is coming in a song, they tend to go, oh my God, I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to do it. And they tense up and that's exactly the opposite of what you want your body to be doing in order to belt successfully. So you want to imagine when your notes are going up that they're actually going down. And this is a little tip that I got from Felicia Ricci, who's another Yale graduate and also a vocal coach. Um, definitely recommend her videos. As your notes are going up, you can imagine that there's an elevator that's going down. So if, I, if my voice is going up, uh, I can imagine and even use my hands to simulate the elevator going down. So that's my quick and dirty how to belt method. I hope this was clear. I tried to keep everything succinct and yet comprehensive. So hopefully I struck a good balance. Obviously, if you have any questions, you can hit me up in the comments below. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you here next week for another singing tip video. Until then, happy singing.